Gamers love a good narrative. However, there is an unspoken truth that after completing a single-player campaign for a game with a gripping story, no matter how good that story is, players will tend to put said game behind them and not pick it up again for a long time afterwards. Therefore, isn't it in some ways better to totally immerse yourself in a game designed purely to soak up as much of your time as possible through rudimentary admin and addictive mechanics with absolutely no end in sight? That's why, for this list, we're paying tribute to video games that a player doesn't so much experience as invest in. To be clear, none of these games have absolutely no story, it's just that once the main narrative is done with, there's so much more to do that players could spend an infinite amount of time continuing to play them if they wish. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most satisfying time sync games. Number 10. RimWorld there's a joke within the RimWorld player base that you haven't even completed the tutorial until you've reached a thousand hours of gameplay, which should give you a clue as to what you're getting into here. RimWorld lets players build a planetary colony from scratch in a hostile solar system. One of the things that makes RimWorld so addictive is the Storyteller system, which randomly generates events like crop blight, flash storms, plagues, mechanoid raids, and more, constantly keeping the player fighting fires so problems don't swiftly spiral out of control. Whenever a player is thinking of putting the control down, something is practically guaranteed to happen right then and there, meaning they'll just have to deal with it. On top of this, the game's difficulty scales with the success of the colony. The better its defenses are, the more creative invading forces will become to mess it all up. You can never truly relax while playing RimWorld, which might sound like a recipe for frustration, but it always keeps the game fresh, ensuring the player is engaged to deal with whatever the next drama is. Not only that, but the cutesy character designs get players incredibly invested in their journey and they'll feel awful when something bad happens to them. Seriously, we're still not over what happened to Clive. Rest in peace, Clive. Number 9. Minecraft Minecraft is generally accredited with the boom of the crafting genre, however the addictive nature of its gameplay is also due to how its crafting works in tandem with the game's exploration elements. To play Minecraft is to constantly want and need more. Eventually, the little wooden plank hut players started off with won't cut it, and they'll be wanting to make something bigger and better. More storage, more decorations, more furniture, all of which means spending more time exploring the map in search of more resources. Before they know it, players will have lost three hours strip mining in a cave in search of those elusive diamond blocks. Along the way, many of your grand designs may be put to rest by a troublesome creeper, but it's the promise of rebuilding again, bigger and better, that will keep players hooked. The world of Minecraft and video platforms like YouTube and Twitch are also virtually inseparable, as the game still widely cultivates an active community of viewers and participants looking to spur each other on with just how far they can take their creations. Although it might be considered a classic title at this point, Minecraft is responsible for inspiring creativity in a generation of gamers and is still doing so to this very day. Number 8. Prison Architect Taking inspiration from the likes of Theme Hospital, Prison Architect is a private prison construction and management simulator from Introversion Software. From a top-down 2D perspective, Prison Architect incorporates sandbox and micromanagement gameplay allowing players to control the building, management, and running of a prison. The player will be responsible for overseeing various aspects of this penitentiary, including finances, prisoners' needs, and scheduling labor programs. Then there are the moral elements of the game. Players can use their limited space and budget to give players huge cells with private bathrooms, a personal TV, and free gym equipment, but even that won't be enough to keep them under control for long. Keeping things cramped, small, and sparse is cheaper and easier to manage, but the inmates will get upset faster and players can end up with a full-scale riot on their hands. We imagine that managing a high-security facility filled with dangerous inmates wouldn't be a job we'd particularly excel at in real life. Prison Architect, however, turns this into a fun experience, which might even reveal answers to difficult ethical questions on managing socially maligned communities while playing it. You know, maybe. It's a video game. Number 7. Stranded Deep what if your plane went down in the ocean? Perhaps you'll discover a secret underwater city filled with splices, or make friends with a football with a handprint on it. Well, Stranded Deep lets players find out by putting them in this exact scenario and plopping them on an uncharted island. From there, the player will have to scrounge the island for rocks, twigs, and the odd coconut to cobble together shelter, rafts, weapons, and anything else that might come in handy. Due to the limited resources, players will need to explore further afield, braving dehydration, starvation, and 
and hungry sharks determined to bump them out of their rickety raft. Failing this, they can try to dive unprotected to shipwrecks or locate and explore abandoned sea forts in the hope of finding something that'll enhance their chances of survival. If you've had enough of the main game, why not seek out the three mythical sea creatures found in specific places in the game's world? That way, you might even return to civilized society with something to boast about. You know, aside from your awesome new friend Wilson, who is an all-round swell guy. I'll see myself out. Oh no, six more entries. Okay, never mind, I'll see myself out in a bit. Number 6. Stardew Valley Ever felt like leaving the modern world behind and taking your chances setting up a farm in a sleepy town? Well, Stardew Valley is your chance to do just that. The game begins with your character inheriting their deceased grandfather's farm and being tasked with reworking the land from scratch. The player character begins with only primitive tools, but the game allows players to move on to sophisticated solutions as their income and reputation grows among the townsfolk. Though they'll have to put the work in, not just with crafting and animal husbandry, but building their relationship with the locals too. The player will also have a chance to work with the spirits of the valley, the Junimos, to help restore the natural balance by completing seasonal bundles. Inspired by Harvest Moon, the therapeutic repetition of farming in Stardew Valley is extremely relaxing, and players will find themselves getting invested in the game's story and characters with each passing season. Before long, the effort put in by the player might even lead to getting married to one of the lovable NPCs. Sadly, the already happily married Robin is unavailable for this option. Until that mod I've been working on comes out, that is. Number 5. Megalomania not to be confused with the fan-favorite song from popular indie RPG Undertale titled Megalovania, Megalomania is a lesser-known old-school RTS that went on to inspire many popular titles. In this game, players control a god tasked with setting their initially unarmed followers on various missions that will transform its primitive society into one that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other cultures fighting for supremacy on the game's island setting. As would become common for games like Age of Empires, which Megalomania inspired, the number of followers assigned to a single task determines how fast or effective its completion will be, helping players to defeat opponents on each level before moving on to the next island. There's also the joy of watching your little dudes evolving through time, going from rock-throwing cavemen to futuristic space warriors zooming around in flying saucers. Each of the AI opponents have on-screen portraits, voices, and personalities. Be warned, though, as these rival gods can be untrustworthy and capricious, often requesting an alliance with players only to break it and attack them within moments. Although the interface is dated by today's standards, the addictiveness of Megalomania's gameplay still stands up, leading many to agree that it is, as the characters in the game would say, ergonomically terrific. Number 4. Command and Conquer as Westwood Studios' follow-up to the game-changing Dune 2, Command & Conquer is perhaps the game most responsible for defining the RTS genre as we know it. The plot of each of the games involves taking a side in a global war set in the near future, complete with full-motion video cutscenes and an ensemble cast to tell its story. The original Command & Conquer took the management and strategy elements of Dune 2 and improved upon them significantly, allowing players to construct bases, acquire resources, and raise funds for weapons and attack forces to defeat their opponents. Starting with empty construction yards chosen by a lone mobile construction vehicle, or MCV if you want to get game terminology about this, the player can click on nearby areas to gradually expand their settlement and turn it into a formidable base. Another factor that made Command & Conquer a time sink was its unique and convenient approach to enabling local multiplayer. Each commercially distributed box of Command & Conquer contained two CD copies of the same game, making multiplayer possible with a single purchase, something which significantly contributed to its popularity and remained a holdover for the second game before the series inevitably shifted to an online multiplayer focus for later titles. Number 3. Rust the aim of Rust is to survive in a world where everything wants you to die. A bit like living in the modern world, eh? Mm. Unfortunately, Gallo's humor won't save you in Face Punch Studios' brutal survivor sim. Originally created as a clone of DayZ, Rust's addition of crafting elements made it something akin to an R-rated Minecraft. Like in many other survival games, the objective of Rust is to simply keep yourself alive in a procedurally generated world using the crafting system effectively, all whilst managing your vitals in a hostile environment. What makes Rust truly unique, though, aside from its setting, is its focus on multiplayer. With the primary threat coming from other people, the player's ability to build 
build bases and join clans is imperative to their individual survival, with the raiding of other camps also being key to, you know, not dying. There are also player-operable vehicles in Rust, with boats, helicopters, and even hot air balloons available, allowing players to traverse the map quickly. Just, you know, watch out for enemy heat-seeking missiles looking to shoot you down. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in Rust, and although it might cause a fair amount of friction between friends, cheesing off your mates has never been so fun. Number 2. Civilization Series What's this? A wildcard entry? Don't tell Peter, please. What other series gives players the opportunity to influence a society's entire history from literally nothing to launching a rocket to another world? Since all of the Civ games are fantastic, we couldn't not include them all on today's list. One of the things that makes the Civilization series so addictive is its sense of progression. Cities and units will require management, research will need to be invested in, taxes will need to be balanced, and the happiness of your citizens will need to be maintained, meaning there's always a clear set goal to aim for. Rival civilizations, led by recognizable historical figures with their own personalities loosely based on their real-life counterparts, will be working towards the same goals as the player, but there's the option to work diplomatically with them rather than having everything come down to mindless aggression. With six mainline games to choose from, as well as a bunch of spin-offs, Civilization is literally genre-defining and perhaps the ultimate time sink series. Just one more turn, you'll be saying to yourself as you add another layer to your campaign until you look out the window and discover that you've in fact been sitting at your computer for so long that space travel to distant worlds is no longer confined to the world of fiction. Who knew that being the leader of a globe-spanning great civilization comprised of hundreds of thousands of people over multiple continents would require so much micromanagement, eh? Number 1. Sim City. While the Civilization series looked at the macro elements of managing a society at large, SimCity's gameplay goes a little deeper into the ins and outs of running a city. The game starts off deceptively simple and escalates in a way that completely draws the player in. Before long, their small residential district will have become a sprawling metropolis with a full monorail system and five fire stations. Players will need to keep citizens' taxes low to maintain and grow the population, but high enough to pay for all the projects and amenities that make life in the town attractive. Taxes, people! It's never been so much fun. Players must also carefully consider how they'll plot roads to avoid traffic jams, how they'll manage power and sewage, and how they'll make the residential areas attractive enough to become high value. The little citizens can be demanding, but trust us, players will become attached to them very quickly, which is probably one of the reasons why 2000's equally addictive The Sims became a perfect spin-off for this series. As with Civilization, we're really talking about the entire series here rather than just one game. However, with the original available to play for free, why not start at the beginning? We're sure you'll be finding recommendations for your local council in no time.